If you or anyone around you are affected by the subjects of today's podcast, you can reach out to get help, advice or support from our charity partners, Women's Aid, at womensaid.org.uk or the Yorkshire-based organisation, IDAS, at idas.org.uk. You can also find these links and reach out to us directly via our website, takebackthebeat.co.uk or email us at takebackthebeat.co.uk tour at gmail.com that's take back the beat tour at gmail.com uh, hello hello my darling hello welcome to take, take back, back the beat, beat. <laughs> voice, voice notes <laughs> <laughs> i tried to follow you then so i was like i know and i tried not to let you and I, it doesn't work it doesn't work we're too synced no. up now I know you too well. Bugger. <laughs> um, how are you? How's how are you okay? How's your life? What's yeah. happening? Uh, yeah, I'm good, man. Yeah. I'm all right. I'm just, good. you know, sat chilling, living my best life, day off and all that jazz. <laughs> you don't have days off. <laughs> <laughs> so go on, on a scale of zero to a whole jar of Biscoff, how is your mental health this week, my darling? Um, I'm still a little tired, but what's new? Um, but I'm all right. I, really? That's good. I wanted to tell you about, seeing as though we talk about Biscoff, obviously, I thought I'd do it now. So those of you listening, Nat knows because she saw it, I put it in the group. My dad, so shout out to my pops, bought me a double chocolate fudge brownie Biscoff Stop edition. It. it was like Stop a it. brick. It was a brick. It was a construction was site brick. and I, I was livid, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. sent it in the group, mate. It was <laughs> fit. And Your dad um, messaged me on Instagram, I haven't told you, with just like, come on, it's waiting for you. And I was like, I'm on my way. Of babe. course he did. Of course my dad's <laughs> messaging you on Instagram. <laughs> I was like, I'm on my way. <laughs> oh my God, yeah. It, it was like... Because I had a gig that day, shock. And he um, he messaged me and he was like, you need to come now. And I was like, what's happened? And he was like, no, you need to come. I've got you a present. And I said, well, I'm, I am working today. And he was like, and I said, can I get it? Like, I don't know, say two days later when I was going to see him anyway. And he went, no, it won't be any good then. You must come now. <laughs> and no. I was like, what the fuck has he got? So obviously I was very intrigued by this. And um drove to his and he gave me that and I couldn't be happier and my brain was like right um just taste it now you know just have a little taste see what it's like send it to the group make everyone jealous and then you can have it as a treat after your gig because you've got to drive to the airport yeah and that didn't happen I obviously not. had one bite set off and then I stupidly placed it on the seat next to me and oh, no. every time I had a little bit of traffic I was like I'm feeling stressed. I need a bite <laughs> of my brownie. And then about 30 minutes into the journey, the whole thing was gone. And I was like, I'm going to throw up. Thank you. I've not even I'm got so to my I'm so proud gig. of you. And I ate the entire thing and I don't care. And it was beautiful. It had a full Biscoff cookie on it. Ah, oh, it looked so... <laughs> I might even post it on our we social should, media. Just you know so what? You We're going to post it. it. We're going to post it because it, it just it deserves fine. a round of applause. Um... So yeah, fuck the jar when you've got a brownie. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> That's Dad, a quote. Dad's, Put that on a t-shirt. Yeah, my dad stepped up the Biscoff game. We don't even we don't need the jar anymore. I just eat an entire brownie. But our, I love um, how so many people of our friends and family know how obsessed we are with Biscoff. Yeah. That they just make our... Like, it's my birthday in a couple of weeks and I am just expecting <laughs> Biscoff related <laughs> treats. Oh, damn. Now you know what I'm getting you. <laughs> I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so that's me so you know doing me how are you on a scale of one to a whole jar of the bis one to a whole jar um I'm alright you know like yeah I've I get days when I'm like I really could do with some bis mm -hmm. um bit of stress money issues as always and oh my god I feel like yeah just there's been so many you know it's, it feels like it comes in one hand and goes out the other and then um, opportunities. Do you know, I read a quote the other day and I literally never related more to it in my life and it says something like, I'm sick of these near misses. Mm. And I was like, oh my God, yeah. <laughs> because there's so many times, obviously we don't preach about this on our socials, but when something happens and you go, oh, this is, oh no, it's not. Yeah. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, got, yeah. Ah, got We've talked about this um, before because it takes us, a, like, I think over the years, there's been so many near, like, experiences yeah. for us and and then let downs like huge ones and especially yeah. when I was younger I'd let myself get so carried away with something and then it would just be swept away from me and yeah. it's the worst feeling in the world that I've got to a point now where I'm like until I'm on that set or until I'm there and there's like pen to paper yeah. or I've got my foot on that stage I don't I don't believe it almost which is a horrible way to live but I'm trying to get excited about things, but also That's, it's really yeah, difficult. Literally. So I know where you co- yeah. that quote definitely hits home. Yeah. So it's been it's been one of them weeks of just a bit like, uh, okay, uh, okay. And trying to just stay positive and on point. But it's it's still good. I'm still like keeping my head above water. You know, yeah. like I'm still I'm not letting it drown me too yet. And I think I was so scared of my episode coming out and I didn't realise I know it was weeks ago now, but I was still it, there was a, you, you'll understand it. It was something in the back of your head going, "Oh God, oh God, what's what's going to happen?" And then it's out, and you go, "Well, ah, yeah, okay, I can do anything now. I've spoken my truth, and I've never yeah. done that." So it's a great like release, got, isn't it? It's scary yeah. as hell. I'm still. I mean, it took me a few weeks to even listen to mine. Oh, I've, God, yeah. I've listened to all of them, but it came to mine. I was like, "Skip," and I mean, my mum's listened to it. My dad, God love him, can't hasn't listened to it still yet. He can't. Yeah, my and dad's that, that upset, mine, yeah. yeah, that upsets me because I don't yeah. want to upset anyone, but I know, you know, it was definitely. But a it's tough... a different upset. It's their yeah. baby. Like my mum listened to mine, and yeah, just my wants dad to protect about me. It. You know what my dad's like. Exactly, and my dad's the same. And he he said to my mum about it, and my mum was like, "I don't think you should listen." Mm. And dad was like, "Yeah, I know roughly, and I, I don't need to know the ins and the outs. She's my baby." And I'm like, "I get that, and that's that's fine." Mm-hmm. Um, he supports me, so it's. <sighs> it's a hard listen like a lot of my friends have been like um I need to be in a good place or I I just can't like I love you too much to hear that and I'm like I get it I get it um so yeah it's it's been um a week of testing but on the up you know but we're so, and I'm really excited for our guest today because obviously I'll introduce her properly in a sec when we let her in the room. But it's so random. It's a friend of mine who is um, he's quite a successful actor now. Um, it was so weird. I, he's in Emmerdale and I, I literally turned the TV on. I don't watch soaps. And literally his face came on and I was like, what are you doing? Get off that TV. <laughs> what are you now. doing on there? <laughs> what are you doing there? Um, and I adore this boy to pieces. And his girlfriend is very strong and outspoken feminist and she doesn't have that word as a negative and I love that like Mm -hmm. that word is thrown about quite nastily sometimes and it's not a nasty thing it's a great word it's something we should all be because it means equality yeah anyway um and like I went out for lunch with him and my partner and he was like you need to speak to Joanne so um yeah let's let her in the room let's play a little jingle and uh "Ah, I'm so excited here we go We have the incredible Joanne Thompson, who I met briefly once over Zoom um, during lockdown because Joanne is a a saint and she's actually (laughs) the girlfriend of a really good friend of mine, uh, Lawrence Robb. Um, If you guys watch Emma Dale, Lawrence is on there. I know Lawrence as playing the part of the towel thrower at Gym Box in Covent Garden. (laughs) That's uh, He just used to make my Sunday shifts a lot more fun. So, Um, yes. But you may know Joanne because she is an insane actress, um, part of Outlander. Woo! <laughs> what I mean, that's just literally when I, I told my partner, I was like, oh my God, like Lorenzo's girlfriend's an Outlander. We were like, okay, well, I need to not fangirl because that's just really awkward. But that's amazing. So yes, Joanne, hey, how are you? Hello. Hello. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you so much for having okay, me on. Thank, thank, thank you for being part of it. Yes, it's amazing. How's how's everything been going, Outlander-wise? Uh, yeah, fine. So the, um, oh God, I mean, career-wise, Jesus. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> what was to say? Um, well, um, yeah, Outlander's good. It, um, just the last episode of season six just aired, so we're in for another Droughtlander, as the fans call it. Um, Great. Uh, but yeah, so um, I, this, I'm this, a new character on this, this season. This is my fourth time auditioning for this show, though. Wow. Um, and yeah, career-wise, I mean, great, but in the interest of transparency, just got 
got cut from a, a, a huge film that was due to do this week. Just had a terrible audition right before this recording. Oh, no. So like, yeah, I'm just being upfront oh, and honest. No, because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. just oh well. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you're amazing to us. So that's absolutely. Well, you're amazing great to me. To this is how I mean, this is why um, I do this. I'm like, yeah, I just hang out with people that like think I'm cool and I and you're cool and yeah <laughs> um, I love this yeah. I love this um but like the main reason so I went out for lunch with uh, Lawrence a few weeks ago and I'd seen you posted something on Instagram and I instantly was like Lawrence before we catch up because love you dearly but this is more important <laughs> I was like your girlfriend has just put the most amazing article mm-hmm. up that you screenshot and put on Instagram mm-hmm. and I I didn't see I showed it to Farah and I was like Oh my god! I know, I know her. I was like, mm-hmm. I need to speak to her about this. Um, so I kind of want to talk to you, like, why you posted that and mm-hmm. what it means to you, and what kind of about this. If you haven't seen it, um, go on Joanne's Instagram, and it says five steps you can take if you're wor- asked to work with an abuser. Um, so feel free to just tell us a bit about it, mm-hmm. a bit about why you feel this passion towards the subject. Uh, yeah, so I, this this article was like a bit of a. I also wrote a sister article um, that was like titled "What to Do: uh, Five Steps You Can Take If You've Abused and Want to Repair Some Damage." Because like my main point is like all of this stuff has fallen to the survivors to fix, and we yeah. ain't got the energy because it's just. I mean, the whole thing's just an absolute triggering. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, it's on my website, Joanne Thompson. Uh, dot uk so if anyone wants to check it out please do but um yeah it's it was I just thought well I've got some practical steps that I've taken to kind of make it slightly less painful and um things that I've learned through trial and error that I didn't know were available or I didn't um yeah I didn't realize I could do or ask for and I think I've I've reached a really pivotal point in my career which I think I think a lot of people get to where I do place this stuff above jobs now like this is I'm like I will risk a job or I will risk um, and and, you know thankfully I'm in my good I'm a good little saver (laughs) I'm good with my money that I'm in sort of (laughs) like I put it all in high investment (laughs) bonds or whatever I don't even know but um, (laughs) I'm like anything that's like uh, you know so I'm now kind of in a position where you know, and I feel very fortunate to to be able to do that. Um, you know, I'm really yeah. I'm not in a position where I can kind of pick and you know I can't I'm not in a point in my career where I can really afford to lose those jobs, but I am in a point in my career where I can make a stand or try and help some other people yeah. on the way. Like, um, yeah, so that's kind of it came out of that, and um, I, I mean, yeah, I can talk about kind of like what I'd you know discovered through that but basically you know I've had to work with um we can go into more detail but I've had to work with um actors who have uh, you know very seriously sexually assaulted good friends of mine and then you know being asked to be in a room with them for months on end sometimes playing their love interest knowing what they've done and me being a survivor as well it's like two of the I mean you know you make what you can of them and then I think there was like three or four years in between even those two jobs and the things that I'd learned and the vocabulary that I'd developed and the understanding of uh, the nuances of everything that's around it um developed even within the 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 time between working with those two people um so I was in a a bit of a better position um but even at that like you know um you know, I'm maturer, maturer now. And um, <laughs> I, I've i been, you know, I've been in abusive relationships and been sexually assaulted and things like, oh. ma- mainly out with the industry, actually, for the most part. Yeah. Um, but you do carry all of that with you into the industry. And then I've had, I've just finished like a investigation, maybe like a, a few months ago, as an investigation with a TV network that, um, like, I had to report someone that, um, and it took me two two years to work up the courage to do that because it was just they were like really famous, oh, wow. <laughs> and I'm like not. Wow. Um, so yeah, that was that was a really that was really hard. And um, that's a summary, but I can go into detail of like I yeah, mean obviously not too much detail, but I can I can yeah, like but um, you're allowed to say very much, yeah as I'm much not, detail. Yeah, I'm not yeah, going to name. You I'll give. never name any no. names, but. Um, or any specifics that yeah. could lead you to who they are. Um, but, you know, it obviously doesn't sit well with any of us that we are protect everybody's... It's this weird yeah. thing, isn't it? Where it's like, um, you... 
like people, you know, casting directors and directors or whatever are very quick to, you know, and in your case, you know, bookers or whatever are very quick to be like, let's not work with him again or let's not work with her again because can I swear? Oh. Yeah. Of course you can. Um, oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, Absolutely. let's not work with them because we're a bit of an asshole. Like, so usually, you know, that's enough to just, you know, you make your own yeah. choices in a freelance career about who you do and don't take on board your your company or your work or whatever, who you choose yeah. to work with. But there's something about this that because, because what they have done is illegal, then yeah. all of a sudden it's like we can't possibly... You know, at the very least, they're an arsehole. At the very least, they'll be yeah. not a good person to be around. Like, yeah. And, you know, we make decisions based on that. So, uh, you know, when, like, <laughs> lots and lots of women <laughs> and girls have come forward about, like, one person, it's, like, it just, there, well, there is no smoke without a fire, I would say. But, you know, there's definitely fire here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like, it's yeah. not just smoke. There's, Actual like, fire. fire yeah. And we've got the receipts to prove that there's fire. Um, and it, it's it's that sort of, what I've found is, there's like a real disconnect between the basically the policy you know there's a policy side of it that's um uh you know if you get assaulted on a specific job that you're hired to do then you know policy has got better because they're working hard to do that so policies policies are in place where if you feel brave enough and you know all of those other things are in place you can report to someone and it should be handled correctly etc cetera, etc cetera. But yeah. where it doesn't, where there's really a, a cog in the machine missing is this, um, the fact that we are freelancers for the most mm-hmm. part. We're going between job and job yeah. to job and they are also going between job to job to job. So quite often they might have assaulted you, but they did it on a job, you know, years ago and then you're asked to be in a room yeah. with them. There's no, there's there's like no one has any jurisdiction over that um so yeah yeah, I'm on the phone to equity bloody constantly to try and you know speak for friends of mine and and other things um but yeah and I mean I've I've kind of been I've seen both sides of it like I helped a really good like the helper she could definitely do it on her own she's an absolute badass um (laughs) like one of my oldest friends through you know, a, a trial that took four years for her to get her day in court with, you know, quite a Jesus. big actor. And like, and that there was DNA evidence and he's in jail now. And, um, you know, and they're like, obviously, yeah. you know, things are scram- scrambling to like remove his projects and things, which affects everybody that's part yeah. of that project. So yeah, it is like, yeah, I don't know. And, I, you know, I'm coming, I'm coming on here with, it's a developing you know it's a developing thing mm. and none of us really have the solution but um we are all the, the the thing that really pisses me off is we're all scrambling for like a billion solutions a day that come to my head I'll write them down yeah. I'll try you know I'll make phone calls I'll make emails I spend so much and like you guys doing this like it's all we're all overcompensating for these people that yeah. are refusing yeah. to get help refusing to get therapy refusing to accept any yeah. responsibility and um yeah. And if they are, they ain't telling anyone about it. So obviously we are just assuming you're the same, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, like until yeah, someone, absolutely. Um, you know. Yeah, you were saying just... that at the beginning when you said about, you know, it's down to the survivors to to make the change. That I've never thought of it yeah. in that way until you said yeah. it then. And I was like, yeah. oh yeah, that is so true. It's down to us. Yeah, I had, yeah. I hadn't thought about it either until like I think that's one of the reasons why I had to write that because I just had so many thoughts I really I really uh, reached when I wrote that I was it was a week that I just um well I mean what had happened with that um it was it was around the time of my friend's trial um and like my friend's um you know that whole mess and um there was a whole other mess that went with it that I can't really go into but it involved yeah. other people like it wasn't just it wasn't just him even though he was on trial and um it it just on a day that should have been a day of justice there was other things that happened that just like sort of took us all back yeah. to square one like um, mm. again and that was really frustrating and and then I took up equity and a lot of people don't know about this but equity if you're an equity member uh, I know it's kind of more uh, it's for actors, but if you're an equity member, you get free, th- free, can't say this, free, 
three three free <laughs> sessions of, <laughs> of um, therapy through BAPAM. Um, so they've partnered with BAPAM. So you get, um, yeah, you get those sessions of therapy. That's wow. really good. Yeah, I, didn't, I didn't know that. No one knows. I'm, yeah. I'm an equity member yeah. and I had no idea about that. Yeah. So. And I have exhausted <laughs> all six of those sessions. And, oh, babe, yeah. Um, and yeah, and then actually through through the um tv network that was reporting someone through um i asked them to provide therapy as well like six yeah. sessions on that so yeah i managed to get like 12 sessions of therapy without um having to pay any money which is good because really it shouldn't be us paying it it's the people that did it to us it yes. be. yeah um, but um that's another question for another time. if you don't mind me like mm-hmm. asking so what what was it that you needed the therapy for or is it different things or is it um, particular yeah so the uh, that the one that I'd gone through um, the TV network for that was um, uh, that was an experience on something that uh, it, it wasn't uh, it, it was a really great area because it wasn't or I assumed it was a great area it, ha- it happened at the screening of uh, of a TV show um, so right. the job had technically finished. You know, I had no other yeah. kind of support after that. Mm. I didn't really know where to stand. It was so... I, I cannot describe to you how grim it was. Like, it was just the most blatant... It was... Yeah, someone that was living under a rock during the Me Too movement. Like, it was... It just... Yeah. I mean, the Me Too movement is has been happening from the beginning of time so i mean like you know during like the wines yeah you know, when things shifted yeah, yeah, yeah. as we thought when it hit yeah. its height yeah. yeah um it was just so blat. oh yeah it was absolutely grim and one of the things that i would recommend anyone to do that anytime this stuff happens this yeah. and this was more recent than the other the other incidents so i was able to kind of um I got down my thoughts like the morning after it happened. I wrote down everything that happened, everything that was said, everything that was done physically. And I sent wow. it in an email to my agent. And I just said, look, I don't want to do anything with this right now, but I'm putting a timestamp on this and putting this as a statement yeah. so that you can see it. And, you know, they offered to kind of take it further. And at that time, I was just like, I don't know. There might be a second season of the show. like a, um, And ultimately, you know, this person's going to get cast before me, you know, and I'm really at a position where Ugh, they might yeah. they might say, eh, I don't like working with her, with her so let's oh, just not, God, yeah. if I made a fuss. So it's just, and I'm, you know, I really... <laughs> um, I would need that break, you know, if that got that got another of season. Of course, yeah. So, um, that's but, mad. But I, I had that email, which meant that, um, and then it was actually, it was Sarah Everard that um, it was seeing, it was it was that feeling of uh, that man um, and, and all of the, the previous reports that had come through that helped paint a picture yeah. of who he was as a person. And I thought yeah. if that person in that shop had not reported that he exposed himself this would be a much harder trial for her. Like it would be, you yeah, know, and, and I thought I need to, I need to say something because the way this was done was with such blatancy and such disregard for me as a human being, like a frightening oh amount that I was yeah. like, there's no way in hell that he has not done mm-hmm. that before. Like, and, and probably would do it again. But you know, that way where you can yeah, just tell. They it's know like, what they're doing. This is yeah. so, yeah, this is so um, removed from all... You know, and it was with the, the execs were there. Other people were present, and he knew that I could not speak. Like it was, it was a horrible, what? horrible experience. Yeah, um, and then there was something said to me like on my own. But for a lot of it, there was like witnesses. Some of the, some of which, and and I, and you know, I enlisted the help of them later on, and they, you know, very yeah. um, rightly so, you know, backed me up. But um, yeah, ha- having that email was really, really helpful. So I'd encourage anyone, yeah. a- anything you do, just. Have it down. Have a paper trail because you. I mean, yeah, you never know when any of this stuff's going to come out, and it really helped because I could. I wouldn't have been able to remember. You know that way when you yeah, start, you do dissociate. Yeah, yeah. Like you completely dissociate, and you're like, if something that couldn't possibly. Yeah, you start questioning and, yourself. You know, and you're like, did I hear that? Like totally. Did that? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. And it was an yeah. actor I've I've admired since oh, I was a kid. Shit. Like so, it was just like. Oh, that's upsetting. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. It was grim. It was really grim. So, um, that that was really helpful. And then you know, it was handled so well with you know the the um, HR department. But luckily, 
you know that was a that was somewhere that had an HR department you know most places don't or yeah, they have to outsource don't, yeah. them and um and that that for me I think is what's the the missing link is like um although I haven't spoken to equity and they have said that there's things in the works that hopefully will um go ahead with like the times up movement and stuff where because you know most other industries have you know an independent um kind of organization that does these things where it's not yeah. it's not the police it's not equity because they're a union they've got to be kind of impartial it's something else that's like our own court of mm-hmm. like investigation because yeah you know ultimately these things are sackable you know that's what i was told this what what this person did was a sackable offense so in their opinion it absolutely should be a non-rehirable yeah. offense and that is what they deemed it um but obviously without you know it's not something that i would go to the police about necessarily um well I yeah mean, I, I could have but like no one i've gone to the police before with things and um, yeah it's difficult you know, i don't think any of us have got a lot of confidence especially when they're out also you know they don't have the best they yeah um, they turn into abusers too exactly sometimes. yeah i saw that, yeah. that you'd you, you know you'd shared stuff about that it's just it is like the ultimate yeah. abuse of power yeah. <laughs> like it's, and it's do you know what's really immense. even you just saying it it's like yeah you something happened to you that was not right and you know it's not right and you go well my career I'm not in that place yet and I'll get known as that girl I'll get known as the one that's causing trouble and I I had it years and years and years ago it's kind of one of the one of the reasons that led me to leave musical theatre was I, I had an incident with a casting director and when I brought it up to my agent I was very much told they wouldn't support me and um that I would just be known as that girl and you'll be oh spoken about God. as that happening. And I, I shut my mouth, I said nothing and I didn't get seen wow. for six months for anything. And I heard later that because rumours had gone around and I was like, wow, okay. And then the, the next audition I got was with this person yes. and I, I didn't go. I was like, I can't be in that room because I'm terrified. But... I've spoken to people since who, as soon as I say, like, what happened, they go, oh, yeah, I know who that is. Oh, yeah, yeah, that happened to me or that happened to so-and-so. But, oh, yeah, still working. Yeah. And you go, this is, because it's mm. not on our side, especially this industry. It's not on this side. It's it's very difficult to get your they break. They have the power in still, unfortunately. Theater, they TV. They have the and, power. And it's, yeah. they control that. And it, it shouldn't, shouldn't be the case. case. No. You shouldn't be going to therapy. You shouldn't have to. You shouldn't have to have been put in that situation. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, that's just crazy and like you said earlier why should the survivors have to deal with the aftermath well do you know like, why it's it's interesting though because maybe it's a really like uh you know rose tinted glasses way of looking at it because in my you know in all three of our heads I imagine we are like well surely you know if you if you've done something like that and you know we all learn you know you'd be scrambling to fix like but then that's because that's our my I, I just I just can't put my brain in the brain of someone yeah. that is capable mm-hmm. of that because clearly if you're capable of that the, the whatever little chemical that that gives you remorse in any way it just it ain't there yeah. or I, I yeah. don't know what this yeah. is you know I'm not a psychologist but like also just FYI the free equity therapy is also available for abusers too um, and I would encourage <laughs> them to go to th- i mean well yeah it's in- it, wow well of course it is it's available ther- therapy yeah. is available for everyone and abusers need it more yeah. than us and unfortunately yeah. the situation that we are in right now is that and what i've been up against with equity and other you know organizations is that they're like ah oh, this isn't our jurisdiction you know this we can't we're very limited in what we can actually do to help here because you know legal stuff comes into it it's totally understandable you know i, I get it they're sort of they're they're limited on what they can do but when they're not limited it's they can step in when it happens again so if that person's on set yeah. and i'm like right so you want to wait until someone else gets sexually assaulted what you're saying is this paul in when someone else is like literally sexually assaulted like i'm not waiting for that fuck that like let's fix it now and yeah. if fixing it doesn't necessarily mean sacking them or, or sacking them or doing you know it doesn't necessarily mean that because I know that you know that's not always possible and it's just not maybe the right move either like um you know on the outside yeah. that's that seems like the right move but it, it might not be the right move um 
it might do yeah. more damage than good. But getting them help and getting every single yeah. person in that room 100%. help because there are there are, there are like people in this industry that are absolutely known abusers and people. Yeah, you know we've we've all got we're not keeping a list that could be found. We're keeping a mental mm-hmm. list of people that yeah, we, we know absolutely will not work with. Um, or if we will work, we'll work with them, we'll make sure we've got a good support network around us and therapists and all the other you know like yeah 100 percent. so it's really interesting like you literally your your article that you'd posted me and my partner were talking about it and I was like what would you do if you rocked up to a set or theater or whatever and you knew that person and he was like ah oh, nah bye he was like I couldn't he's like knowing what you've been through especially like mm. I, I, I couldn't do it I I just I'd have to leave and I would make a thing about it I would he's like I'm not a I don't have a big name or anything, but I could not do it. And I was like, yes, like that's, that's the attitude. It is being like, what they are, you said we have a mental list and I hate that, but we've had people on this podcast who speak to us and they go, oh, this happened and everyone knows who it is. Yeah. That's when it's really worrying when it's like, there there are people um, in in the industry that, um, that are still working today, um, specifically in Scotland, because it's it's such a small, such a small place that, you know, you mentioned two words and they know exactly who you're talking about. So that, that's not a good sign. And why would anyone want them on their on their cast list or on their set like yeah, why 100% um, because everybody feels uncomfortable and genuinely you know it's only out of the good fucking goodness of our hearts that we are not going to you know that there's there's people that have wives and children that I don't believe deserve what I could talk yeah. about you know I don't believe they deserve yeah, 100%. that 100% um, but ultimately it is absolutely out of the goodness of our hearts that we are not you know, everybody's sitting on a fucking cold night into the press. I have had press contact me left oh, and right, really? wanting me to talk about yeah, this stuff. Of and, um, like, uh, yeah, and I've had people name those, like, so, I, I mean, I personally, I mean, each to their own, I would understand absolutely every, every possible way because it's just, like, any anytime something goes to the press, anytime there's a group of people that get together and take something to press, believe me, that is the absolute last case scenario. That's only happened because absolutely everything else has not happened. And, you know, you can argue life like blind about the right way to do that or the wrong way to do it. But ultimately it's just people trying to make things safer for us. It's not looking great. (laughs) And there's this stream of existing examples of when, um yeah I, there's I mean there's a very specific case I don't really know if I can speak about but um there's there's an actor working that's um was that that I know was suspended in fact there's multiple actors that have been suspended for drama school um that I know of that are working and they were suspended from drama school because of their behavior because um in one case you know 25 women and girls came forward um what yeah um and he was suspended and you know they uh, i you know i i know these survivors and ultimately um you know for various different reasons and because they were advised not to you know might not have gone to the police and of course in our world that is the that is the punishment. That is the jail. Being suspended from drama school, and yeah. you know, obviously, that adversely affecting your career is that you know that's a punishment. And you know, at sixteen or seventeen or eighteen or nineteen, you know, when you're much younger, you're like, um, I don't really know what just happened to me, but this feels like a just punishment. Yeah. Um, and they have gone on to essentially be rewarded for. That that year they were taken out a year earlier and were doing professional work in that year, um, while the rest of their uh, year had to do student shows. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's, um, it's I've sat terrifying. down to like when I've been really really not good, absolute depths of despair with all of this. Like sat down to enjoy something that's like a really easy easy show that you know you don't have to think of it, and then he oh, comes Jesus. up yeah. in the show, and you're like, are you fucking kidding me? And with that, um, you know, I've had people, I've had those people, those perpetrators specifically, confess it all to me. Like, because, yeah, I mean, they were laughing about their victims to me. And I was like, absolutely not. Like, and on that, like, I had to absolutely, I had to compartmentalise while I was in rehearsals for that show because... 
I nearly didn't take it. Like I nearly didn't take the job, but it was just like, it was a career changing job for me. I'd never worked with a company before. I was just like, I've wanted to work with this company yeah. like all my life. Like I can't not do this. Um, and yeah, like, yeah, of course. and of course, anytime these things come up or whatever, all of the survivors tend to be, you know, triggered again because, well, A, yeah. because their pictures are all over socials or whatever. You're just, stro- you know, scrolling through, going about your bloody That's daily so life. True, and yeah. then it's like your mm-hmm. attacker's just like, oh, great success for you. Great. Well, you know, and it's not a better thing at all. And I, I do believe people can change. But like I said, unless unless there's some real fucking effort on their part, equal yeah, to, if not more, it? than what we are doing to change this culture then yeah. you know there's been no apology you know apologies yeah, of course not. it just I mean it's simplest and, and, and a real one that's not just like this is so I can work again kind of vibe because it doesn't really matter because you're already <laughs> working but um yeah. yeah it's just the nuances of it and the uh, and what I was saying to equity is that I mean, there's no way to measure this because it's just, it's just heart and pain and anger like across the board. Yeah, so course. however, you know, whatever's happened to you, whatever the, the circumstances around it doesn't really matter. But, you know, there's a world in which um, if you're attacked on set and you report it, that's a feeling where it's f- horrendous, but there's hope. Because they attacked you yesterday, you get to report yeah. it today and you hope that something's going to happen. But then being on a job with someone that attacked you six years ago and has been rewarded ever since like what's That's... what's worse you know when there's when, the, when yeah. the 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 trauma plus the lack of hope I think is like the real kicker that's like the thing that just yeah um God. yeah that's horrific so the the instant you mentioned um with with you and the reason you're getting a bit of help like is anything come from that like has um, you say like they, the company were amazing, but has anything come from it, or is it still kind of going on? No, it's it's resolved now. It's been resolved. Okay, yeah, um, okay. And it was resolved brilliantly. And um, great. Yeah, I can't really say yeah. what the yeah, like resolving was, but it's um, it's good. Um, okay. Yeah. And you handled, feel supported, feel, and you feel I could not have felt more great. supported. But yeah, that's you know that's an Brilliant. HR manager that's been you know working in HR for decades and you know Brilliant. it's not the first time that they've had to do this and they did it really really well because I think they really admired okay. my like when I went in for the meeting they were like we so we had this happened to us countless times when we were starting out in the industry and starting out in like this company or whatever and we didn't have you know the bravery that you've had to come for and it's weird saying bravery yeah, cause it, but it is it is yeah. fucking brave like it takes it um, takes fucking balls mate yeah. good for you so yeah um did you say yeah, you knew some people as well and friends or people that you just work with that have had the same sort of things happen, but they just either don't want to come forward or... And sometimes we were saying this, you know, I dropped the charges against my abuser because I didn't have the strength anymore. And I'm not oh, ashamed yeah. of that. I wasn't in the best place and I didn't have the strength because I knew how long it was going mm-hmm. to take. Um, and yeah. I couldn't do it. I could not do it. So absolute, yeah. like, hats off to you. And do you think sometimes that takes it away from people and they just go I just can't do you think that's a lot to do with it because of the yeah the amount of time it takes to resolve something like that it feels like it's just mm -hmm. hung over you yeah completely I mean for instance there's you know there's an ongoing thing that I'm trying to help on you know accountability sessions and work with survivors and just talking about what they need that's where I'm sort of removed from the situation you know I've had to work with the person I know the person I would have considered them a friend like the person that did it and then obviously not anymore but like um they're um listening to what they need and it all having to come from them as it should is like really really important um but at the same time it can be frustrating because everybody is it you know even like the survivors of one specific person are all at different stages in that journey yeah so like we've had things stall because you know someone's just really can't mentally take it like that week or whatever and has had to like kind of go awol or whatever which is completely Mm -hmm. understandable and then we are like okay we don't feel right carrying this forward because of that but then the other people have just you know rehashed all of that pain for nothing mm-hmm. so like I've, I've, I'm starting to gain knowledge and understanding of like when to engage these yeah. people or whatever because it's like it's That's important amazing. but it's um trying to like gauge what do you want to happen here without you know um 
Uh, yeah, it's just, and it's so funny because there's so much of this that I'm talking about that, that you worry like people will know or people will know who you're talking about or it's too specific. Yeah. And I'm telling you right now, it ain't specific. There are multiple, it really isn't. like yeah. at any one time, there's, you know, there's probably two hands of, you know, like yeah, that's it's not, the scariest part. you might listen to this and think, yeah. oh, that's me. Yeah. About. and it's like it's not just you don't worry mm-hmm. um so it is mm-hmm. like safety yeah and it's safety in numbers in every respect because it's it's about changing the entire system somehow I know about there was one particular case that me and Lawrence spoke about your partner um because his picture kept popping up with the article and obviously that's quite upsetting for a lot of people because a lot of people clickbait don't read the article, just see the picture and may associate. And obviously, like, Farrah, you've never met Lawrence, but he is, I love that boy. Like, he is a feminist, true and true. Like, he is a dream. Um, yeah, I actually mentioned him in my episode. He's the person I spoke to when it happened to me a second time and he was getting ready to go oh, he do was some a damage. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, I'm fine. And he was like, well, okay. and I was like, I'm fine, mm-hmm. breathe. Um so he's he's a gem. But when I saw this article, I was a bit like, that's horrible because no one needs to be associated with it because he was actually sticking up for the girl in question. Yeah. But obviously fucking press and newspapers, they do want clickbait. It's clickbait. clickbait they want people yeah. to read it. And it's it's really terrifying. And I can understand why a lot of women go, I don't want to come forward because you don't want your name out there for that. No. And as shit as it is, it is still a taboo. And we still, as women, we are, we do get embarrassed and ashamed of the things we've been through, which is horrible. And especially when you're trying to make a name for yourself, especially in TV and theatre, there's so much press and publicity mm-hmm. that you you have to be careful and that shouldn't be a thing. But it is. So yeah. it's amazing that you have come forward and you've your emotions and you're doing something about it. Like, freaking good for you, babe. Like, I mean, it, but it's yes. not like, uh, I I mean, thank you. It's a weird thing to take a compliment for, but thank you. And I think, <laughs> uh, like, I have been, you know, I've been guilty of um, when things, when I understood things a little less and, and that, you know, different yeah. people reacted to different things. Like, you know, I've lost, I've lost, like, I really, I really great person as a friend because I didn't realise yeah. that, you know, I've learned since that that was how she had to deal with it and I I was getting, in fact, I mean it was off the back of something that I'm about to talk about but like I um, I was really not okay and I really let okay. that, um, that my frustration my, like thinking, you know but if we all just like rally together and you know people shouldn't be <laughs> yeah. turning their backs on me because I need I need women around me now like and I I can remember being like angry and I, I and you know irate and sending these long long I'm really I'm very much known for Lawrence will tell you I'm a very, um, I like an essay I like a WhatsApp essay like and it's just like people <laughs> Babe, me and you Cara too we're all the, um, read but more people yeah. can't read more yeah exactly <laughs> people me. can't um, you know can't always deal with that and I, I re- I'm realising yeah. that other people are better at being like I know what I need and I don't need this so stop you know and I'm I'm removing yeah. myself I didn't know that that was a thing that you could do <laughs> was to remove yourself <laughs> from a situation or a friendship or whatever because I'm such a uh, I, I'm just uh, I have been in the past and can still be a massive people pleaser so like yeah um I, you, you know uh, yeah and I've lost people because I've I've thought this is you know you know everyone has to be you know action now like now let's fix it now yeah. and not everybody can do yeah. that and you know people are no. worried about different things and um yeah so that's like yeah. a massive regret of mine that that that, that happened but like I think Oh, like I think a little bit more empathy all round that everybody deals with it differently, that, differently. Um, which is something I didn't yeah. really at the time realize or the harm that I was doing tr- you know trying to fix it quickly so I'll talk a little bit about this specific situation if that's all right because it is a very again like nuanced mess um but I right after the Weinstein um uh story broke um, a paper approached me randomly, which and I really, I think I'd done like one TV thing. I'd done a lot of theatre, like definitely was, I mean, I'm still not really, but like, you know, I, I wasn't, it was just weird. I was like, why? <laughs> like, why are you contacting yeah. me? And apparently someone had recommended that they get in touch with me because I'd obviously been starting to kind of, even before, you know, Weinstein came out, you know, I've been starting to 
speak about this stuff or understand things or investigate things or figure out what the hell, why yeah. is it the way it is? And um, so I spoke to this man and initially I was obviously hesitant, but I was like, oh my God, like I thought, shit, someone's asked, someone's asked me to speak about this. Someone's asked me to do this thing and speak about this thing that, you know, I have a really... A, a better understanding than this guy does so let me you know work really hard I'll arrange it but I was like if I don't do it this week this will no longer be a story everyone will, forgot, will have forgotten next week that Weinstein even existed like let's just um like I need to do it now and yeah, in my um although you know I was frantically preparing but in my preparation I still did a good job I worked really hard to like you know write stuff down that I wanted to get across you know but in a really um a narrative that wasn't actually being spoken about um, because I was starting to understand these nuances and the whole pattern that leads to this and stuff and the fact that it very much is not just our industry you know it's present in every industry until that yeah. changes it's not gonna um, you know it's not gonna change here and um, you know all of the little nuances and things that he as a rep- male reporter that's not in this industry just wouldn't have understood yeah and he very kindly you know was giving me the time of day to figure out you know more about find out more about it and I met him in a cafe and I sat down for him for an hour I had the sense to record it on my phone and he also recorded it because I've been t- told left and right journalists will misprint your work like they do and I'm like why yes. is that a thing like why surely yeah, that's their only that job oh yeah, yeah okay yeah. we only need to have a, yeah. a, a drink about this because it's just like <laughs> it's um yeah. they will misprint so your words off. and I'm like why yeah. do you why is that just an acceptable thing like why is that an acceptable yeah. thing that everyone left and yeah. right was warning me about so I, I recorded it all sat down with him an hour and I was really pleased with what I'd managed to get across and I could te- I could sense that and you know he was talking about these young starlets and stuff and I was like no it's not really you know he was just sort of the way he was speaking was like you yeah. know infantilizing a bit and it was a bit weird but I got you know I was strong and I got back to the topic in hand and I got back to that nuanced sort of you know thing underneath it all um and then we walked across the street to a hotel here um that, that sounds like it's going to get really bad but it wasn't bad um <laughs> just like to the foyer and I got a picture to, there was like a photo shoot or whatever and he called me the next day um to say that um the, the thing had all been repo- approved and um it was going to now be a double page spread with a headline on the front page of this paper and I was wow. like oh, wow okay um, and he was like so I'm just giving you approval of the the headline on the front page and I was like okay that's good you okay that's good and he said oh, this no. phrase that I never also it was terrible journalism <laughs> like it was something like um I I didn't meet any you know I've been in early on and off but like it it was just yeah, anyway he was like I didn't meet any men like Weinstein when I was in Hollywood I've met plenty in Scotland though which what I, I never said that um a i never said Ooh. that and b it was more because the, the the cast and couch culture which is what he wanted to interview me on is yeah. it's yeah. it's very present right it's present but it's not oh, God, yeah. it's you know there's in Hollywood, you know, this, this he was able to hire, you know, people to squash those stories and stuff. And like, yeah, it, I want to talk about the fact that it's not just cast and couch. It's not it's always someone in power that can give you a job yeah. and is exchanging a sexual favor in exchange for that job. It can it can be all of these other things. It can be people on your level that then move up the bit, assaulted mm-hmm. you when you were down here. Like it's it's across the yeah, full network. 100%. Um, and so I was a bit taken aback when he, you know, quoted me that because I was like, well, I didn't say that. And he was like, well, I know you didn't say that exactly that, but, you know, and I was like, mm, right, okay. And I remember giving, I gave him permission to use that because I thought, well, maybe that's just how it works. Maybe, you know, I understand that that headline would be like, oh, who did she meet in Scotland? I'll pick up this paper and yeah. I'll read it. And ultimately yeah, I was yeah. like, at the end of the day, I want people to read it, you know. It'll I get want, read, yeah. Um, you know, I want your regular Joe to be, you know, hear nuance Absolutely, about a subject yeah. that maybe hasn't usually. And I got it um, on, on the Sunday. I was on, the, on a train down to London because I had five editions that week, right? I don't think I've ever had that many editions in, my, in one week oh, in my good life. good God. I know. It was like, I don't know, just <laughs> things kicked off. Good for you. Um, so I was learning all these lines, really stressed. And I was like, I'm getting on this train. And in Glasgow Central Station, I got the paper at like W. Smith or something. And I, and I sat oh, on the no. train to, to look at it, right? And I could see my headshot on this front page. Open the double page spread. And I just, 
I just collapsed. Like I was just like, not, I'm, I'm not kidding. There was five words that I had said. There oh. is not one figure. That was it. That, those were not only the, the, the words that I'd said in order. And I understand, you know, if I, um, if I didn't speak so good and, um, you know, you want to like flower my language a little bit to make it stronger, make it, you know, better. Fair enough. Yeah. But not only did he make everything I said worse, none of what I had said was in there. He had put quote marks around his own opinions oh. of what it's what? like no. to be an actress in the Scottish theatre industry it was i mean you're interviewing a woman on the subject of silencing women and you've silenced a woman. I, just, I mean yeah. i just laugh it was absolutely, it's absolutely laughable. I, I mean, was it retracted did he retract so it? i took it to the independent press standards or like listen i can write an email Brilliant. believe me these poor <laughs> they were getting like two thousand more emails from me left and right i was just like <laughs> proud of you i I'm so proud and it, you know i didn't um it wasn't for money or anything like it was just the pure i was like this man cannot get away with this i am not having and some of the words were really damaging and part of that um part of me losing that friend and stuff was off the back of this article because there was people there was people that I knew in London that I hadn't you know that I'd went to drama school with I hadn't seen in a few years and stuff that were contacting me like like, this is this are you okay like this doesn't sound like you this is weird Mm -hmm. are you like what's going on did you print this did you see these things because some of them are damaging and just sort of really simplistic and gross and um and I think they also assumed that I had gone to the paper. Like it, it had yeah. that, it had that feeling of me being like, "Oh, a time for me to shine. Let me contact someone and make this enhance my career." And I was like, "Absolutely yeah. not. I would never do that. Like I would never claim to speak on behalf of anyone." But someone asked me, and I thought, "Well, if I'm being asked, and you know, yeah. I've use got the time, platform, I'm going yeah. to use that." to the best of my knowledge and um yeah so I took it to the independent press standards organ well at first I took it to the editor who was um male which is maybe irrelevant but maybe not he said um basically what came back to me was oh he said that you said these things and I was like well here's a recording let me transcribe the entire hour's recording for you just to make it really simple I can you tell me at any point did I say these words and he was like and then they got back to me and they were like no he said that you said them on like on the way to the hotel and I was like on the two minute walk across the road off the record you're saying that I (sighs) said this entire interview like and I was like a gun to my head I would never have said these words like I know myself I would never have said these words um and yeah and it just went back and forth and back and forth and it became ironically a he said she said scenario with the paper so then I was like fuck this and took it to the independent press standards organization organization and I won and they retracted it and printed an apology but now amazing my you know if you google my name that article like well the article isn't visible anymore but like the headlines of the front page is still visible so it's like this yeah like you said like this weird association with something that was like absolutely not not, to do not yeah <laughs> it was gross um and I swore uh. from then on I'd never speak to another journalist because then once I now I've started writing I'm like there is no way yeah. in hell like because on that page there was a couple of other opinion pieces by women that they'd asked them to write and they were so much better written they were so you know they had the nuance and the understanding that I wanted to get across that yeah. you know for me and um I was like, never again. I would write an opinion piece, like, and then yeah, I was. <laughs> I'll never do any anyone hey. ask me on this. I'm just like that. I don't That's trust. Horrendous. Like you said, though, how can they do that? I mean, obviously, you didn't get away with it in the end, but how are you actually allowed to do that yeah. and print? bullshit basically yeah. like you said that's he just made damaging. it up. he might and as well have not interviewed you exactly you that's just... exactly what i said i was like he might as well just have printed an opinion piece on what it's like yeah. to be an actress in the scottish industry like that would have been <laughs> and the it fact that the same, yeah. you know it wasn't there was actually oh, quote gosh. marks around it you know if you're sort of speaking like oh and she said this it's like no no you're quoting me as saying things that i have never said that in i have said like Oh, it was disgusting. Like, I've never... Like, again, and I ended up not it, going to two... The two... Those five editions, I ended up not going to two of them because I was oh, so distraught, oh, like, God. that week. Um, oh, yeah, the knock-on effect. Constant yeah. tears. Because I've been silenced, yeah. you know, it, it was that whole gaslighty, silence, abusive thing that, you know, we've, well, it seems all three of us have experienced in mm-hmm. relationships yeah. and, and not in relationships, where it's like, you just did that again. Like, you just did the yeah. exact thing again. How dare you? That's that's yeah. the irony, isn't it? He's interviewing <sighs> about the thing he's he's done. Like he's, he's literally doing to you, yeah. yeah. Uh, have you I, have you spoken about what happened to you? Well, I <laughs> you didn't have to. I did. 
I did um, an interview a few weeks ago about the podcast, mm-hmm. about the tour, trying to get some sponsorships and press. So um, I spoke all about Farah's story as well as my own, the the work we're doing with Women's Aid. Again, I was on the phone for a long time. Um and the article got released last week. I don't know if Lawrence has told you or if you know, but I was I was held at gunpoint years ago. Oh my god! Um, no. Very, I'm very lucky. Like I'm alive. The bullet got stuck in the gun, so he pulled the trigger, but nothing happened. The headline read: "Local girl shot by gang." My parents got Texas thinking I was dead. <laughs> Oh my god! Like, and we were on holiday at this point, and my dad, my dad was, he can make a joke out of anything, so he was like laughing it off, and I was like, people are going to read that who haven't heard from me for years and think that you've been shot, or people who know the real story will go, why is she lying for attention? Exactly. Oh my god! And I, I instantly, I went straight onto our podcast WhatsApp group, and I was like, guys, is this going to damage the podcast? What do I do? And like, I did speak to the editor, and they did. She said she misunderstood what I was saying. Um, so she did. I'm actually, I'm actually talking to you from the great beyond, and I have, you know, I'm like, <laughs> this is a go. Like, oh my god. Um, oh, babe, it was. The I don't understand said, how that story can be misinterpreted. Like, you literally have just said exactly what happened, and yeah. she's gone. Oh, you were shot by a gang. No. Yeah. Like, she it's said the still bullet. Fucking horrendous. But yeah, it's so horrific what if happened. You, but if you tell someone no. you've been shot. That's different to being held at gunpoint. Yeah, it's very different. And like she's she's put in this article that the bullet was lodged in my body. And I was like, <gasps> oh, I never no. said that. Oh um, no. And like it's luckily not funny, but it is. Like I'm not yeah, like, it's just like people. I had a little breakdown about it and like luckily our producer of this podcast was just yeah. like, nah, all press is good press. Don't worry. And like I just put a tweet out being like, this isn't true. If you want to hear this full story, head here. Yeah, right. <laughs> And oh, like, I mean, it, it's, again, I kind of did what you did. I was like, well, I can understand the headline because it's going to get clickbait, but it's not technically true. And I don't like that. And uh, um, but yeah, you just have to be so I like now you've just said about recording it yourself. I'm like, right, I'm going to note that down. Thank you, Joanne. That's a lovely piece of knowledge that yeah. I didn't yeah. even contemplate because in my head I was like why would they make exactly. up anything yeah yeah it's a yeah, good cause it's a great story they're there to help your voice and tell a story mm-hmm. yeah. so you'd think well why would they yeah. do anything but different? they didn't even mention the podcast or the tour they didn't even no. mention the name of it oh, or the fact Christ. we're working with women just basically you nothing put your story in there was nothing to do with yeah. what the actual topic was yeah about, we've just about a picture of, of me it looked like an obituary like, oh my god I'm so sorry that's how I'm so, it was yeah. it was ridiculous but they have they've put another story out and they've they're going to do another interview about it and I was like with someone else yes okay and um, again and I'm it's a bit more careful it's the irony of like people talk women yeah. talking about the violence that's happened against them is like a really touchy yeah. subject mm-hmm. and the reason we don't like to talk about it is because we're worried that it will get misconstrued Absolutely, hundred <laughs> percent. Like, oh my god! Yeah. When you like, told stop. me that on a, while you were away, I honestly thought you were like taking the piss. I, I thought, no, that can't be so far from what you said. And you were like, no, this is it. This is what she's done. And oh. then she sent this thing, and I was like, babe, what do I do? And like, I had a little breakdown. Obviously, Farah got really annoyed for me because she was like, that's triggering, and it was. It was really yeah. triggering for me, and for my family. Like, they were just like, oh, why are we getting people contact us? And I was like, uh okay let's get this changed but it's it's so hard because I actually remember that story about you coming out really um yeah I was randomly I was in Scotland when this came out and oh. I remember reading it whoa that's weird that's ter- yes, that's scary because, to me because I'm like and, you have a form of a, I mean you know I guess yeah. if you don't know me uh, well I don't know what did you think about it do you remember to be honest I I remember reading it and being like I don't really understand what this is about right. because you're not talking about Harvey yeah, it was a ter- uh, it was, was like a terrible, like terrible journalism. Like, I mean, it was yeah. grim. Like, I re- I remember ugh. reading it, and I remember because you just started talking it. I was like, I've read that article. Yeah. Um, and I remember being like, I don't really understand what this is about. I'm gonna move on from this. Yeah. So, and so like, to anyone else, it doesn't I didn't judge know you, me. David. Well, I know, but it's like, you know, 
it looks like it I'm coming. I'm coming to a paper with a half formed idea <laughs> and like jumping yeah. off the back of like a hashtag. Genuinely, that's what it would appear to, and that's what it appeared mm-hmm. to people. Yeah. That that's even what it appeared to people um, that have known me for years. You know that I would have hoped so would have thought shit. better of me. It, like it yeah. appeared like that. Um, and it's so, so, this is why I'm like, I think it's w- incredible what you guys are doing because it's just like, you really do need to go to the source. Like if journalism, yeah. if these, if these people cannot be trusted to tell our stories, then fuck them. Mm-hmm. Like we'll just cut yeah. out the yeah. middle, man. Like we'll do, we'll do it for ourselves. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Joanne, you're an absolute queen. We've taken up so much of your day, but we love you so much. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank so you. Much. And thank you so much um, for what you're doing. What you're doing is so so important. And no, I'm just, oh, I'm so you. like, yeah, I've really taken my hat off to you for getting getting the shit done and you know raising and money to for you, babe. Like yeah, and to you. I think you're we're making all, waves. We're all in this together. So that was the incredible Joanne. How amazing is she? She's a boss bitch. I love her. Yeah, I love yeah. Her. Like, please, guys, go onto her Instagram, go mm-hmm. onto her website, read the articles she's written because they are just. I mean, a she's very, very clever and very clever with her words. Like how she yeah. writes is really easy to read. Yeah, um, which I love because I can get distracted quite easily. Um, but she literally, I read it and was like, oh yeah, wow, nail on the head, done. And I love she's just such an advocate. Like, mm-hmm. yes, Queen. Like, it is so hard in our industry. You don't want to make a fuss. You don't want to be spoken about for anything other than loveliness yeah so just yeah fucking good on her you know what I mean legend she speaks the truth it's as simple as that and you know she's so kind with her words and supporting us and it just it gives us a push to keep going as well which yeah. we like always she's need. so busy yeah she is so crazy busy and then when I'm, Lawrence that she messaged me and he was like Joanna Greenlight here's her phone number and I was mm. like Wow, and she literally like she messaged me like, "When are you free? Let's do, whenever let's do it, is yeah. good for you." And I was like, "Oh my god, like it's so lovely that people are so supportive of this cause and this yeah. change." And yeah, you guys are all awesome. Yeah, love you. Thank all. you once again. Um, and all her socials and everything will be linked below. And if you want to see her doing an incredible thing, Outlander, go watch. Oh my it. god, mate! I mean, <sighs> incredible. What a show to be a part of. Yeah, you know? amazing, iconic. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah. So before we go, do yes. you have a win of the week? Do I have a win of the week? I was going to say, I don't. Do you? I don't know. We were going to use the Biscoff because mm. not only did Farah have this massive slab of Biscoff, um, I also had a Biscoff Easter egg. So we feel like Biscoff are really channeling the world and we're really here for it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, maybe our win of the week is just Biscoff like subconsciously getting on board of us. Yeah, let's just throw it out to the universe. Just Biscoff. Just eat lots of Biscoff. Biscoff. That's the win of the week. <laughs> I will not get over that brownie. Like, it uh, was... Never. It was immense. And also, before we go, guys, tickets are on sale for our tour. It is not yeah. a podcast tour. It is a live music tour with live bands. Me and Farah are singing our own original music as well as some incredible guests, which are already announced. Yeah. Go onto our Instagram and our website and you can see who will be headlining at a venue near you. Please come support. All proceeds go to Women's Aid. Yes. So um, we'll see you we'll there. We'll see you there, beautiful creatures. Ow. Right. Bye-bye. Love you. Bye. Love you. Peace out, A-Town. Down. Down. We do apologise if anyone was triggered by any of the dialogue we used today. We are still learning and we are only just beginning to talk about our own experiences. We're aware that trigger warnings are completely different for everybody, so please bear with us. We love you all. We also want to hear your experiences. If there's anything you'd like to share with us, any stories, anything you are happy to discuss on this podcast, you can stay anonymous if you would like. Please send us an email at takebackthebeattour at gmail.com. That's takebackthebeattour at gmail.com. You can also find us on social media at Take Back the Beat. Thanks, guys. We love you all.